Hi everybody, just a brief video uh, today to look at the concept of object data. And what object data is, is it's basically synonymous with GIS attributes. And by using this concept, we can create these attributes and apply them to our geometry within a map 3D or a civil 3D environment. All right, so let me, let me go ahead and show you how this would work. We'll begin with, I've got some lot geometry that's been created. It's just essentially polylines. If I select one of these, right click, and we'll look at properties, we can see information about that polyline. One of the reasons that I, I want to show this is because if we look at properties, once the object data has been associated or these GIS type attributes, we'll actually see them show up in the properties dialog here. So right now, no extra data. To go ahead and create that, what we're going to do is we're going to switch over to the map tool space here or workspace by going to planning and analysis. And then I'm going to use the map setup area of the ribbon. And we're going to come over to define object data. Now when we define object data, what we're going to do first is give it the name of a table, basically the location where it is we're going to store this information. So we'll say new table. I'm going to call this lot data. And then we can start defining fields or our individual attributes that will be assigned in this case to lots. Could be to lots, could be to blocks, it could be to linear features. We can actually assign them to any of our civil 3D objects as well. All right, let's take a look at this. Object data fields, it's empty right now, so let's go ahead and create some. Um, one of the things that might be helpful for me is to create information about the owner. So I'll go ahead and type in field name owner. And then I'll tell the system what type of value I'm going to record in there so it knows how to handle it. It can be an integer or a whole number. Character would be text. Point would be a uh, coordinate value. And real would be a floating point or some, some numerical value that had a decimal. In this case, uh, it's pretty academic. For an owner, it's going to be a character. Description, I'm going to say uh, uh, owner's name. And then default, one of the things that I like to do is I like to put something in that's indicative of what I'm looking for with respect to format. Um, for example, do I want first name, last name, just last name, first name? What, what exactly are we looking for when it's asking for owner's name? The other thing is I want something that's obviously wrong, that I don't want John Smith or John Doe because there may be a John Smith or a John Doe that shows up in my data somewhere. So uh, what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to say uh, L name, F name, as far as I'm looking for last name, first name. So we'll go ahead and add that to my list. Next thing I'm going to come down to, let's put one in here for uh, um, value. We'll say uh, that is going to be a real because it'll be a decimal. Description, we'll say lot uh, value. And then my default, I'm just going to say zero. Add that to the list. We'll do one more. We'll maybe say uh, create one for pin, the parcel identif identification number. We'll use that as an integer. This will be... Uh, parcel ID and my default value I'm just going to use one two three four five six seven eight nine so just a nine digit pin we'll add that to my list all right I can continue to add additional information and you'll see later that we can actually use the system uh, to pull other values that uh, ge the geometry knows about and uh, and enter those as attributes as well we'll uh, go ahead and say okay for right now and I'm going to go ahead and close so our table's been created. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to come over to, let's see, we'll go to, uh, it is not insert, it is, it is not home, it is create. So I'm going to go to create. Under create, there is an option here for attach, detach object data. So this is the mechanism by which now we can take our table and start assigning those uh, attributes to our geometry. So we'll select attach, detach data. Now, when we work with the table, uh, it, it's intuitive, I guess, if we know how it works. So just so that you don't uh, make a mistake here, if I select the uh, value or the attribute that I'm interested in, it shows me the information down here. So let's say uh, uh, F-L-I-N-T Flintstone. And we'll say Fred. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Enter, and it'll drop to the next line. What I'm going to do is I'm going to populate those values first. Let's say Fred paid 35000 for the, the lot. And let's say that the uh, parcel ID, I'm just going to say uh, 315 426 987. 
We'll hit enter. Now that I've populated my values, now what I'll do is I can attach that to a single object or multiple objects. I can also tell it to overwrite the information that may already be there if there's already uh, uh, owner information or lot information that's already associated with that object. So I don't have any, so it doesn't matter if it's uh, overwrite or not. I'm not going to detach. There's nothing been added to detach at this point. So we'll just say attach to objects, and we're going to put Fred right here. All right, that's been added. If I highlight that parcel now, right-click and go to Properties, we'll come down and scroll to the bottom, and now we can see that we've got OD for object data. Under the lot data table, we can see the owner, we can see the value in the pin. All right, that information is now available to us for any number of things that we can use within the application. So let's go ahead and close Properties. We'll create one more. All right. Fred's, uh, Fred's neighbor here, Rubble Barney. Uh, we'll say uh, his lot is a little less than Fred's. And we'll say this one's 315, just my nine-digit number. Attach that to objects. We'll add that to Barney's. And then I could continue on and, and add values uh, for the rest of the, the geometry that I have here. I could also start... Um, in some cases, it's kind of nice. You could maybe uh, window a whole bunch of lots and associate the values, maybe the defaults to everything. And then you could start selecting the particular lots, go into properties, and then start making changes, um, you know, to the values one at a time, you know, what we want to take and do in here. Okay, so a lot of different ways, but just quickly creating object data, that's how we would associate it with the geometry. All right, from here, I've got geometry in a DWG file format that has GIS attributes associated with it. I'd maybe now like to leverage this in a geospatial tool or something that would maybe accept a shape file. Is there a way that I can export this into more of a generic format such that we could use it uh, maybe in InfraWorks, maybe I'd use it in another geospatial application, or I'd just like to have it in a GIS format. So to do that, I'm going to type in map export. Let's type in map export. When that pops up, I'll uh, select the format that I'm interested in. Uh, ESRI uh, shape is going to be good, so we're going to do a uh, file name. We'll call this lot data. We'll say OK. First thing it's going to do is a selection. It's going to ask us what geometry we would like to export from a geospatial world. It's a point line or a polygon. This is one thing that if we're going to export Civil 3D data, or if we have Civil 3D data, we're going to want to export it to an SDF. There's not an option here or an object type that'll let us grab civil objects, unfortunately. So in this case, we happen to be dealing with polylines, so that'll work well for us for our lots. So we'll say polygon. Uh, I'm going to say select all. That's all that I have in here. Let's go over to data. This is where I could tell it exactly what I would like to export. So I would like to export, we'll come over here and export lot data. I'd like to export the owner, the value of the lot, the parcel index number. And then this gets back to the geometric properties that we have access to as well. I'm going to click on the plus here. I'd also like to export the area of the lot. And maybe I'd also like to export the uh, length because then I can have information about the perimeter of the uh, each of the parcels or each of the lots that I take and export. All right, as you look at this, there's there's a lot of in other additional information that could be uh, harvested from this that we could export. So we don't have to create a, a GIS attribute or object data for everything that we're looking for. If some of it is geometric data that we might have, you know, we can just pull right from the geometry itself. So we'll say OK. Gives us a listing of what uh, what we have here. The other thing that we could do is we could check the box to say create a unique key field. If I want to make sure that I have at least one unique identifier for uh, every uh, record, the my, every geospatial uh, ob object or every object has got a unique record that I can maybe associate it with a database. You know, I don't want any duplicates. You know, maybe I've got uh, two Barney Rubbles that just happen to have the same lot or the same area. Uh, I want to make sure that there's no way I have duplicates. I could create a unique key record. It's automatically going to call it uh, AD Map Key. So, and I'll do that. It's always good to have at least one. Then if I want to reference it in a database and I need a unique primary key value, I can do that. 
We'll go to options here. I'm currently in a Illinois State playing coordinate system. I'm going to say treat any closed polylines as polygons. And uh, that looks good. So we'll go ahead and click OK. It automatically exported my uh, 11 objects and I've got my data. So from here, if I would like to uh, take a look at that shape file, as we have looked at in the past, I can drag and drop those things that can live with inside my environment here. So we'll come to my desktop. We'll go under Tuesday. And here is my lot data shape we just created. So I'm going to click on that, drag that into my environment here. And when I let go, it immediately drapes right over the top of the geometry I already had. However, now it is in a, a map format. So I want to say map geospatial format. Let's go back to a civil 3D thing here and we'll uh, workspace. We'll take a look at that. We'll maybe, oops, we'll maybe uh, cancel out of my properties and my tool space and let's just bring up the map task pane for right now. So you'll see the uh, lot data is available to us. So with the lot data, I could select one of the parcels, right click. I could say that I would like to uh, view it in the data table. So if we look at it in the data table, we didn't add those values to the other ones, but here is my uh, unique identifier, the area for the lot, the length that was pulled, owner, the value, and then the pin that was identified. All right, so we would have that for all of them. They're uh, already you know connected to the geometry, so I could select any of those uh, values, like it came from any other shape file, it would automatically identify that. Um, and then from here, I could start to do, you know, filter or thematic mapping or wherever else we'd like to go with the data. All right. So once again, just a brief video today to show us how we can, from within a civil 3D or a map environment, create geospatial type attributes through the concept of object data, assign that to our objects, be able to leverage it directly within our environment or export it to a GIS file format such that we could use it uh, elsewhere outside of this application. So I hope this helps, and I look forward to talking to you again soon. See ya.